Hi, I'm Dan Ayers. I'm the Coastal Shellfish Manager for the Washington State Department of Fish and Wildlife. And we're out on the Copalis Razor Clam Management Beach, north of the City of Ocean Shores on the central Washington coast today, with about 5,000 razor clam diggers who are out today enjoying a great midwinter day of razor clam digging. We're going to see all these folks a little later on likely taking home their limits of 15 fat, juicy razor clams to enjoy wonderful fried clams or clam chowder later tonight or tomorrow with their family and friends. And what we'd like to do with you today is give you an idea uh, and a few pointers of how to dig razor clams successfully so that if you want to come out and enjoy this fun, easy to learn activity, you can do that without any problem. And the first thing you need to know when you come digging razor clams on a Washington beach is you got to make sure you're, you've got the right tools. You can't bring a garden shovel or some other common implement and expect to dig razor clams successfully. You need to have either a razor clam shovel or a razor clam tube. We have three different shovels here to show you. One is an, a real fancy stainless steel shovel. One is a very common and inexpensive uh, uh, steel shovel. And here is an old true temper shovel. It was one my dad used years ago that still is an effective tool for razor clam digging. This is Clayton Parson, one of our shellfish technicians, and he has one of uh, a very common razor clam tube. And then this is another razor clam tube that's a little more high tech, new, new tubes that are on the market that are even easier to use. If you're gonna dig razor clams for the first time, I'd recommend you give it a try with a tube first. If you have some friends who are good razor clam shovel diggers and can give you some good pointers on shovel digging, you could do that as well. We're gonna show you both methods today and give you a good idea of how to, how to be successful digging razor clams. So if you're ready, we're ready, let's head on down the beach and dig some clams. Sometimes you need to pound the sand to get razor clams to show, to make that little mark so you know where to dig. You can either pound by using your shovel like Clayton is, you could do the same thing with a tube. You could turn the shovel over and use the, the back end of the shovel, or you can just pound with your feet. So Clayton's found another show here and is ready to dig another clam. You can see right there, as he hits that sand, you can see the razor clam react, and that means there's a razor clam there. So Clayton's gonna go ahead and Position himself with his shovel about six inches behind the, the clam toward the surf. He's gonna dig down and scoop the sand up without shoveling all the way back. He's got one knee on the sand, one knee up to give himself some good uh, leverage as he shovels. Until he just barely touches the top of the clam, he's gonna reach now in with his hand and make sure his hand stays on the surf side of that clam where the hinge is to prevent getting cut and there is Another razor clam ready to go home for the frying pan. So sometimes when you're digging clams, you might get in a little bit of a hurry when the surf's coming, just like that. And, and it's not impossible to break a clam if you're not careful. But the law requires that you keep the first 15 clams you dig, regardless of what the size is or what condition that clam is. And there Clayton dug a fairly small clam that's broken. But you know, that clam's still gonna taste good and you are required to keep that clam. It is a significant fine if he were to throw that clam or try to bury it back in the sand. That clam will not survive. So you are required to take that clam home as part of your 15 clam limit. So when you're on the Washington coast, it's not going to be at all unusual to see brown colored surf. And people often think that that's a bad sign, maybe a sign of pollution or perhaps something even worse, but it's actually razor clam food. That's diatoms, that's part of the natural plankton of the surf zone. And if you see brown, surf, that's a good place to stop and dig razor clams because that could mean they're actively feeding in that area. It does make digging a little difficult sometimes because that brown uh, diatom is almost like a, a slimy covering on the beach and can make finding shows a little difficult. But don't be discouraged. If you see brown surf on the Washington coast, that's a good sign. That means the ocean's healthy and razor clams are getting plenty to eat and they're fat and happy.
Martin is going to demonstrate how to use the razor clam tube now. So he's just going to position his tube right over that show. There it is. You can see that clam begin to dig away. He's going to angle the tube just a little bit toward the surf. If he feels the clam, he's going to stop and reposition very quickly. But if he doesn't, he should be right, have, has, have positioned just correctly, brings the tube up. And there's the clam. Straight and simple. The use of the razor clam tube. Here's razor clams that are right on the surface feeding. You can just see the tip of the neck. And when we touch, down he goes. So Clayton, go ahead and dig that clam. He's gonna position his tube right over that razor clam show, angle it toward the surf with his back toward the dunes. And he's gonna pull straight up and a nice clam is likely to pop right out. There it is, success. Another clam toward the 15 clam limit. You can see that razor clam is healthy. He's ready to dig right back in the sand. If you were to leave him piled up on the sand, that's probably what would happen. You'd lose a few of them that way. That's why you want to get them to your bucket quickly. Especially in the winter months, one thing you really want to be careful of when you're on the razor clam beach is the surf. You never really want to turn your back on the surf. Today's a day when the surf's up a fair amount and there's a lot of surf rolling in, and if you get busy digging razor clams and you're not paying attention, you could easily get bowled over by a big wave. So be sure to keep your eye on the surf and, and pay attention to what's going on on the ocean side um, from where you're at. And also, if you're on the beach, you want to make sure you have some kind of boots. Hip boots work real well. Chest waders also work just as well. And if you don't mind getting wet, come on out in tennis shoes and have a change of clothes up in the vehicle. But you're probably going to get wet when you're digging razor clams. Come prepared, and you'll do just fine. You'll see that the clams we've dug today are pretty good size with a few small ones. But one thing that's fairly unusual, but you will see, and when you see it in one area, you're liable to see other clams that look awful dark colored like that. There's nothing wrong with that clam. He's totally healthy. That's more of a sign of a, a fair amount of iron in the sand, and there's some oxidation on the shell. Don't be afraid of that clam. It doesn't necessarily mean he's an old clam. Some people call these mossback clams because of that sand or that, that, that oxidation. It's not moss. It's nothing to worry about. It's a sign of a tasty clam. Be sure you take that clam home as part of your limit. So we finished up digging razor clams today, and we've had a successful dig, just like you will if you follow some of those simple pointers that we gave you earlier in the video. We've got our 15 clams here. Clayton's gonna take those home. He'll clean them up, and he and his family are gonna enjoy a great razor clam meal tonight. We kept all 15, even the small little one that we saw him dig a little earlier. And remember to do that when you're out on the beach. And you know, since you've driven all the way down to the Washington coast, stick around, fly a kite, build a campfire, enjoy the beach. There's nothing more fun than being on the Washington coast, especially when you're digging razor clams and you're successful. Thanks for joining us today. <laughs>